Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bulgan and I am the Deputy Chairperson at the National Development Agency in Mongolia. The agency is responsible for foreign direct investment and investment promotion in the country. Now when you think of Mongolia, what comes to your mind? Probably the large steppe, animals, the blue sky and probably even Chinggis Khan. Um, if you don't know any of this, that's also fine because I'm about to walk you through some aspects of Mongolia that you may not know yet. Mongolia is um, a landlocked country sandwiched between Russia and China. Uh, because we're at the doorstep of largest markets in the, uh, in the world, we also have many advantages. Um, we are, in terms of size, we are one of the largest in, in the world, uh, but we're also one of the most sparsely populated ones with only 3 million population. We're a stable, a uh, democratic country with more than 30 years now since we have um, adopted democratic governance in the country. Uh, Long-term development policies strongly aim for free trade, um, individual property and uh, more foreign direct investment into the country. The Vision 2050 uh, the long-term policy document in Mongolia, for example, clearly states that Mongolia will strive for uh, values that promote a free trade economy in the country. Um, the government action plan also strives for protection of private property investment and intellectual property rights, so on. So in a nutshell, it's the country that you should be investing in. Now, in terms of international investment framework, uh, we have double taxation agreement with 26 countries and a foreign investment protection and promotion agreement with 46 countries. On top of that, we're a member of WTO and recently we also have joined the Asia Pacific Trade Agreement. We have preferential trade regimes with the EU, US and Japan and I've also just mentioned the Asia Pacific Trade Agreement. Um, but what do all of this mean? Um, all of all of this mean in practice. Um, the investment law that we currently have has been approved in 2013, and we at the NDA actually are currently in the process of reforming that law. Uh, we are uh, going to be drafting new laws on PPP. Um, actually new drafts on PPP and private financing initiative laws. So all these package laws basically will enable more favorable condition for um, foreign investors. Um, but even the current law itself uh, aims for supporting free trade, uh, free tr foreign direct investment into the country. For example, it simplifies the foreign investment approval process it provides equal protection for domestic and foreign investors, and it provides uh, various tax and non-tax benefits whenever possible. Um, for example, in terms of tax incentives, um, of course, all the exemptions that you can have in a free economic zone that we have, and we have stabilization uh, certificates given to qualifying candidates, and we have special policy for such as equipment duty free for SMEs. In terms of non-tax incentives, we have um, if you have an innovative project, for example, let's say in an IT sector, we will be offering you very much favorable conditions. And Mongolia has a long-term vision of becoming Northeast Asia's hub for um, various IT sector projects. So. Uh, probably even a tax haven. So if you have an innovative project in that area, Mongolia is the country to consider. And we have, uh, we offer land use rights up to 100 years in the law, etc. So basically there are various opportunities um, that you can enjoy here. Uh, Mongolia also ha has, probably you know Mongolia for its mineral resources. We have uh, largest deposits of gold, gold, um, silver, and other um, copper and coal, for example. But then beyond that, man, many people do not know that Mongolia also has um, a large deposit for rare earth elements, for example. Um, Mongolia also can be a great potential for a renewable energy sector. We have 
300 plus sunny days a year. That's something that many countries probably can be uh, jealous of. Um, but then what do we offer also for investors in terms of services? Uh, uh, like any developing country, Mongolia, of course, may have glitches in our investor investment climate, but then I think we're one of also the most progressive countries in terms of bringing innovation and digitization into our services. Um, the serum system that basically is a grief management system um, for investors is one of the um, one of the biggest strengths we have um, in terms of um, delivery. I think we're one of the top most performing um, adopters of that service in Asia. Uh, we have all simplified service processes for um, investors. One-stop service, for example, um, contains all 62 services to investors only at one stop. And during COVID-19, for example, we have gone all viral, all the services, and that has been cited as a good example, for example, at various international events. Um, currently, if you look at the composition of the foreign direct investment into the country, we have almost 14,000 registered investors from 123 countries and that already shows you probably the, um, how diverse we are in terms of um, composition. Um, Canada, China, Netherlands, the Netherlands and Luxembourg and Singapore are our um, top, type, uh, top five investors and that's naturally due to extractive um, industry dominance we have. But then beyond that, Mongolia has also other interesting sectors to promote. For example, not many people know that uh, Mongolia has a great potential in agribusiness and in the food industry. I'll give you just a couple of examples where we rank the highest. Uh, Mongolia is the, the, the biggest global fine animal hair exporter. We are even ahead of China with 335 million revenue. US dollars revenue, and we're the fourth largest Asian wool exporter, and we're the second largest horse meat producer. Um, not many people will be fancy horse meat, but then um, let me tell you, it has a great potential in terms of market size. And the fourth, we're also the fourth largest in terms of mutton. So basically, the meat industry has a great um, export potential revenue. In terms of wool and Kashmir, we are the second largest producer in terms of raw materials and uh, we are actually the producer, supplier of 40% of global supply of wool and Kashmir. So the Kashmir that comes from China comes in two colors, whereas in Mongolia it comes in four colors and we are known for the finest quality um, for Kashmir, that's why um, world's most luxury brands uh, strive for, go for Mongolia's Kashmir. So meat processing, leather and wool processing are also other sectors that I will not be mentioning today, but then you can see the full list of potential um, sectors and projects from investmongolia.gov and we also release a pitch book with potential projects every year. Um, the COVID has also hit us hard, but government of Mongolia has been um, a quick responder in terms of um, government regulation and uh, containing the virus. Actually, we haven't had any domestic transmission for the first nine months or so um, since, the, um, since the outbreak. Uh, so basically, in a nutshell, Mongolia is a stable democracy. We are neighbor to China and Russia, um, already giving us advantages in terms of um, geopolitics and and um, landscape and market access. We're mineral rich, but we are more than that. We are offering also other opportunities in other sectors that we have most potential in terms of raw materials and production capacity. And um, 
the rest assured, you just need to come to Mongolia and see the reforms as an investor or as a partner, if not also spread the word for us. So this is briefly about Mongolia. Thank you for your attention. I will be happy to take your uh, questions and comments.